Welcome back to the Fem Channel. Today we are covering Streamlabs OBS settings that stood out to me for like the impact in the most on my stream. Some made my stream look better, some lowered my CPU usage. If you guys are looking for settings like that, this is the right place. We are also going to be covering some camera tips some, and even some mic tips to make them sound better and look better. So if you guys are looking for stuff like that, you found the right video. So moving on, let's get right into the first setting. Um, number one, if you guys do use images like, hey, look at my little logo, little Vem guy. Uh, I do recommend if you have multiple scenes like I do. Uh, let me just move my stuff out of the way. I'm going to hide them for now. But, uh, but as you guys can see, I have multiple scenes. I have scene, end and scene, end and scene two, cam one. And I, I use all of them. So, yeah. Uh, but as you guys can see, there I use media on all of the... That's pointing at me. But if you guys do use them, make sure... You have unload image when not showing on because it will take up a lot of CPU if you do not have that on. Like it will keep like stuff running in the background even if you're not using it. Which is a big race of space, CPU usage and all that. Normal webcams and stuff like that. Uh have this on. Saves you a lot of trouble when you do go to a different scene. Like an end in scene where you don't really have a webcam or anything up. Okay, now to go into the actual output settings. If you're streaming, this is what you would need to do. Make sure it's on audio track one. And if you are, by the way, using a NVIDIA type graphics card, there's going to be a NVIDIA thing here. I'm using AMD or an AMD one, so it won't pop up. Uh, But yeah. What you want to do, if you have a not so great computer like I do, like mid or whatever, is you want to stream at 720p, which is what you would want to change the output resolution to. If you're using the CPU one, because you can't do this on the AMD, but if you're using CPU, uh, use 720p, which is 1280 by 720. You just click it, click that, then you're set. What you'll need for your rate control is CBR. It should already be set to that. If it's not, switch it, but it should. And you want your... This depends on your internet, by the way, but bitrate. If you're streaming 70, 720p, 60 frames a second, 4,000 is good. Might want to up it to like 420 if you want smooth, but 4,000 is good. I mean 4,200, by the way. Uh, Make sure your key frame interval is two seconds. Auto will already put at two seconds, but just to be sure, put it at two seconds. And for lower CPU usage, put it on fast. The higher you go, which I think it goes to very fast, I mean, uh, just it will take up a lot of CPU usage, which will lag your games, which you don't want that for your video slash stream. I have it as my uh, use my stream encoder because... I think it looks alright even for my record ends like this. Like nah, it's a little shoppy sometimes, but yeah. Uh so anyways, uh so on video you do want to you have your base canvas as your resolution you play on, which is for most people gonna be nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Or on wider it will be different. Then on the output scale resolution, you do want it to be your seven twenty P if you are on that lower uh Lower spec hardware slash mid. 720 also looks great, by the way. So don't worry about that here. So in my personal experience, pinning it on above normal makes stream labs and your streams look smoother, like on stream transitions and stuff. But it does leave a little bit of, you know, a little bit less room for your games to run smoothly. So... If you do, like, not have that much stream transition stuff, I would put it on normal or below normal. But if you do have, like, a bunch of things on your stream, I would put it above normal just so it's all run smooth and you don't have a lot of lag on that stuff. So, filters. On the webcam, you do want to mess around with color correction so it looks, like, like really good. Here's what I'm using. Like, it's alright, yeah. Like, you, yeah, it, it makes the webcam look good. Uh, if you turn it off, this is how my webcam normally looks. 
I do prefer this over that <laughs> for multiple reasons. There is also a, what I would call a filter, like a, it's a visual preset, but it's custom. That's what it looks like without that. Actually, this is what my webcam normally looks at, like, doesn't look that great. And then we add the color correction, looks good. Then we add that so you can actually see the background a little bit more. I'll leave a link to this guy's video where I got this pack from. He explains about a lot of webcam things. So if you guys have like a Logitech camera or even like an RI camera that just needs a little bit more improvement, go watch that video. Or if you guys just want some of these filters, also just go watch that video. He has a 30 pack and they're all pretty good depending on your environment and stuff like that. Could like look, yeah. Uh, that's basically all you should want to do with that, unless you have green screen or that, then you just want to color key that out. I could do a video on color key. If you guys do want, I can go in a full and depth thing. All right, so basically, I'm using a Razer Siren X, which is all right by itself. Uh, so basically, what you want to do for making any mic sound really good like, it works on, like, a lot of mics, so don't worry if your mic's like a Sheepo mic. It'll still work. Just with, like, less of an effect, because it is a cheaper mic, but... So, basically, what you want to do is go to Voice Meter. You gotta download this, and I'll also be leaving a link to a file for settings for specifically the Raven Siren X. It makes this sound 10 times better than it normally does. So if you guys do want your mic to sound better, I would suggest using voice meter. Just keep that in mind. But okay. So back to here. This is back to Streamlabs. Uh, so basically what you want to do is have noise suppression. Discs will cancel out majority of the background noise. Especially if you use the RN noise, which is good quality, more CPU usage. It's not that much. I tested, so don't worry about that too much. It's like like a percentage difference. Unless you guys are really trying to get that lower CPU usage, I would just say use it just because it's better and it doesn't take that much more. Compressor, copy my settings, and if you don't like it, don't use it, but I really suggest you use these. So basically on the compressor, you want the ratio to be 10, and then the threshold, threshold to be negative 18. Also, the attack will be 6, release 60, and output gain 0. Yes, what you want on the limiter is the threshold to be negative free. In my personal experience, that's the best. You want the sick you want the release to be 60, and you're all set for a limiter. That's pretty simple. Also, noise gate's pretty simple too. You want the close threshold to be negative 8 and the open threshold to be negative 20. Also, the attack time will be 25, hold time will be 200, and release time will be 150. Pretty good. So, anyways, that was it. If there's any more tips or tricks uh, that you guys can think of, uh, just leave. This isn't a full cover of all the settings. This is just some that stand out to me. Uh, but if you guys do think like there's, I should make a part two, going into more in depth, and even viewer suggestions things let me know in the comments and i hope you enjoy the video have a good rest of your night